by taking it from me because I already gave it to you. Holding nothing back. When you're ready to leave, give it all to them. Simply mean, when, when we ready to take the power back, it's literally going to be us saying, listen, even if I have to miss a meal today, I won't knock on your door and ask you for nothing to eat. Because you feel like that's the only way that I'm going to eat, so you want to keep me in that position. So how can I take the power away from you? Listen, I just go hungry. Now, now, so the person who's been starving me, now they like, well, listen, Johnny came by and cut the grass to the trash, y'all. How is he eating? You took the power. Now you put yourself on equal ground. And that's what Jesus is doing in this text. He said, how you get yourself equal with your oppressor? You got to take the blows without returning them. Because if you return them, then even if you defeat them, you become the oppressor. So how to keep yourself from being the oppressor or the oppressee is take the blows without returning them. Then ask for some more. Give me some more. Hit me with your best shot. Ah, right, that's all you can do. This thing about somebody come here and punch me right now, and I look at him and say, man, that's all you got. He's defeated. He didn't roll all his might. And I'm still standing, and I'm asking for more. And we're going to jump him. And we're going to jump him. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> and we're going to jump him. I just told him that earlier. I just told him that earlier. So, let's go. Now, the man is Simon. He's a Jew. The Roman soldiers picked Simon out of the cross and said, hey, help him carry the cross. Because that was a, that was part of the law. They had that right. They could pick one man, a Jew, and make him carry the load for a whole mile. Jesus is saying, when they ask you to carry the load for one mile, what you should do is carry it for two. Not saying go above and beyond to show your kindness and your mercy and your grace and your extra energy to get the extra credit. He's just saying, show this ain't even affected me. It ain't affected me. You want me to go one mile? I go two. Because it's not affecting me. So in the midst of them, they're trying to do it to antagonize you. They're trying to do it to punish you. When you take their punishment, it turns into your glory. Take the power away from them. Take the blows without returning them. It's simply saying, listen, you tell me to go one mile, don't worry about it. I'm going to go two. So now I did what you wanted me to do and what I wanted to do. Because you ain't got no power over me. So Jesus is telling the Jews on the Sermon on the Mount, they ask you to go one mile, go two. Because when you go two, now you're not doing what they told you to do, but you're doing what you want to do. And that's what we all got to get to in life. We got to get to that point where, listen, where when somebody tells us to do something and we really don't want to do it, go above and beyond doing it. So the next time our boss tells us to do a project that we know that we're not getting paid for, that's really their job, do it to your best abilities and do a little bit more so they can say, well, you know, Dr. Gino, we only asked you to do this, but you end up doing all this because now they want to say, well, I asked her to do something, she did something she wanted to do. You took the power away. So now it made punishment for that extra assignment and look like it was your pleasure. And now when she gets the report, she like, I try to, um, you know, drag her down by making her do that report. And she did two reports. You know? Take the power away. Take, take, take the power away. This is all about taking the power, huh? It's easier said than done. It's easier said than done. Because it's easier to return evil with evil. It's easier when somebody hits you to hit them back. It's easier when somebody sue you to just give them what they want and only what they want. It's easier when somebody give you a task to do that task and say, listen, I did that task. But the longest you keep doing just what is required, you are under somebody else's power. You are under somebody else's command. Prime example, this recording is going on right now. Brother Phil asked me, can we record? I'm like, yeah, we need to start recording. We talked about it forever, forever. He said, I got the tripod. He brought it. Now, when he brought the tripod, we just started recording. You're going to look at the first video. They're going to look at this last video. So now what he started doing, as you know, helping us out because we needed that ministry, he took it the whole extra mile. You see the intro this week, this week's video? Yeah. Did y'all yeah. see the intro? Yeah. I saw it. At first I thought I got the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> I came off of it. I looked and I'm like, and then I see him in his shirt, I was like, oh. oh. Y'all see that? Yeah. So now it, it, it went you from being a set expectation. So it's not what we need, but it's now is what he wanted to do. He took the power away from us. Plus it catches your attention. Plus it catches our attention. It's good at the end of the day. I, like I said, I keep getting talked to you. Everybody keep talking about it. Thank you. Everybody, thank you. you know, but, but what I'm saying is, we, get, we have that same power on our jobs. 
When our boss asks to do something that we know is not in our job description, to take the power away from them, go above and beyond. Not to make them happy, but to show them that this is not affecting me. I'm doing this because I want to do it, not because you told me to do it. That's how you fight oppression. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's how you fight oppression. That's how you take blows without returning. Now, we almost done. I promise y'all. We all done. You can't tell me to put my hands out the window. You can't tell me to turn my car off. Guess what? I already did. I took your power. Now what you want me to do? Oh, I do that. Get out the car, so I'm going to get down. I'm going to get out and I'm going to get down. Now, I'm taking all your power. So the thing you're trying to do to humiliate me, it don't bother me because guess what? I'm doing it anyway. You put that same mentality on your job. You know your boss every couple weeks come in and ask you to do this, clean the bathrooms. So this week, guess what? Get ahead of it. Bathroom's already clean. It, it ain't him. It, it, it's not. You, you, you have no power with me. You know that makes me mad. So since I know you know that makes me mad, I did it before you asked me to do it. It's already done. So now when you come trying to make me mad, guess what happens? I already did it. Take the power. It's all about taking the power. Remove the fear because we all are ready and willing to die. So if death is your only tool, you took the power. And that's what we got to get away from right now. We have to get our people out of the mind state of fear. We have to be ready and willing to die for Jesus Christ. We have to be ready and willing to die for Jesus Christ. As long as we still fear death, which he said he took the sting out of death, then guess what? We will still be oppressed. Because that's what they will keep continuing to hold over our heads. If you do too much of this, you're going to get sick and you're going to die. If you, if you go here and you, and you do that, you're going to get sick and you're going to die. You do that, you're going to go to jail, you're going to die. Ain't nothing promised but death, but the biggest fear that we all have is death. We all said we want to go to heaven, but ain't none of us ready to go right now. Everybody said they want to see King Jesus, but if you ask the question, who ready to go right now? Ain't nobody ready to go right now. You know what? Because they fear death. And Jesus said, how do I take the fear out of the community? How do I take the fear out of the black community? i got to let them know, listen, it's okay to die because to die into me. Now, he keeps on preaching later on and said it's the game. To die in Christ. So Paul said, right, to die in Christ is the game. The whole time the Bible is trying to let you know that death has no control over you. Because if you allow death and the fear of death to control you, you will always live your life to the oppression. Because you want to make sure you do what they want you to do so they won't kill you. So let me make sure that I'm always lining myself up correctly. The question Black Lives Matter asks is, are you ready to go to jail? Do you believe you're going to jail? Do you believe? They live by that. And we got to have that same mentality. Listen, we are willing to die for this. We are willing. When I came back, my daddy's biggest question why he didn't want me to come back to Kansas City, he said, listen, the people who you were into it with, just because you changed your life, don't mean they changed their life. It, it don't mean. He said, so tell me, who said that you walked down the street, somebody that you got to with years ago, won't come in and just take your life. That was his biggest fear. My answer to him was, that I'm willing to die for this. So death has no hold on me. When that guy came to church a couple weeks ago and I told you he wanted to kill me five years ago, listen, he shook his head. Listen, and afterwards I talked to Renisha about it and he didn't know he was coming to my church. He probably would have never came. My mama don't know about it. Did you ever hear about the story about the boys jumping me outside your house and trying to jump me? She don't even know. Toxic. They should know everything. You know. But don't even know. He, he literally, literally, outside, outside my house. My mom has two trees at her house to this day. And it was two boys on each side of the tree. He was one of them. And Jermaine, my sister David Daddy, I was talking about earlier, saved me that day. Saved me. Seen them ducking behind the trees. They came from around the corner. Shoot. Thank God. Saved me that day. I, I could have been going right now. But what I'm saying is this. We got to get over the fear of death. If you return evil with evil, you become evil. And that's what Jesus was trying to prevent the Jews from doing. Because he knew that they were oppressed. He knew that they were harmed. He knew that the government had control over them. He knew that they was about to uh, backslide. So he tried to let them know. If, I know y'all getting treated bad. But if you start doing what they do to you, then you will miss heaven. Simple as that. You, you're not a part of me as long as you try to return evil with evil. And that's what we can't do, y'all. And, I, and I'm, I, I'm done.
I mean, that's, that's what we can't do. We cannot return evil with evil or you will become evil. So you cannot return, turn, cop, turn, the, turn into cop killers or guess what we do? We kill oppressors. Because, listen, Tatiana Daddy's a cop. And if I kill Tatiana Daddy, I'm going to be on the other side. You know what I'm saying? It's in. We got to think like that in all that we do, though. That you cannot return evil with evil because then you will oppress somebody else. You will put somebody else in family danger. You kill my cousin, I kill your cousin. It, all you doing is continuing to the tree. You ain't stopping nothing. How do you stop it? You got to take blows without returning them. That's the hardest part of it. That's the hardest part of doing anything is to be disrespected, being hurt, being damaged, and not returning. Ron's getting good at it. Eventually, he get, I mean, he's literally, over, over, over the last three months, two months, he, he has got to the point now where he can take a blow without returning. You can talk about me, and I'm just going to walk away. That, that, that's hard. It's hard for your wife to, to cuss you out, and you turn around and say, well, all right. Or just laugh. <laughs> did not bother him. If you watch the movie, The Passion of Christ, that's one of the scenes that, you know, probably one of the scenes that I probably do like in the movie because it was probably the only truthful scene inside Jesus' wife was the fact that Simon did not let Jesus pick that cross up to the Roman soldiers made him pick the cross up. Because Simon had heard Jesus preach before. And when he heard Jesus preach before, guess what Jesus said? When they asked you to do one mouth, do two. Do two. He heard the sermon on the mount. He was a Jew. He was in the mass. That was Jesus' largest crowd. That message was going on everywhere. Everybody heard that message. So when the town was come to live it, Simon, the black man, lived it. And they had to make him give Jesus the cross back to carry up the heat. Because Simon never complained because, listen, he took the power out of the Roman government. And so they got mad at Simon. Do y'all know that? They were mad at him for helping him carry this so long. The movie, that's the only thing they paint probably good in there. The only thing they paint probably good. So, what am I saying? 172, here we go. Uh, yeah, 172 is starting. In other words, he taught how to resist without resorting to violence. As Wink points out, Jesus articulates a way by which evil can be opposed without being minor. The oppressor resisted without being eliminated. The enemy neutralized without being destroyed. What Jesus is showing us, listen, it's a way to fight evil without doing evil. And that's the hardest part for all of us right now. See, all these black boys dying out here, and we want to fight evil with evil. Jesus said it's a way to get your point across, and you don't have to confirm to them, because if you fight evil with evil, guess what you become? Evil. And they want us to become evil. They want us to become killers and cop murders. You murder a cop, they're going to drag you in that police station. They're going to bury you under that police station. So now, just like what we see today is modern day lynch. This book talks about it. 1960, if you flip over, they're going to talk about Martin Luther King and how they put fear in their hearts. Listen, literally, this chapter talks about it. Lynching, the reason why they lynch, they didn't lynch in the in the woods. Y'all know that? They never lynched in the woods. They didn't lynch in somebody's backyard. If you were lynched, you were lynched in the front yard on the main street, on the main corner. Do you want to know why? Because every black person they rolled by, they wanted to let them know that could be you. That could be you. They held a parties. All the white people came here and they all got drunk and they all had a good time to watch that nigga hang and die. And they left him up there on that tree, on that main road, not somewhere that there was sickly because they wanted to put their fear into the next man that that can be you. And that's the same thing we got going on right now. Why did they keep releasing the videos? Yeah. But then you turn to CNN, NBC, CBS, none of them talking about it. They talking about the, the bombing, Donald Trump, and Hillary Clinton. That's all they talking about. Angelina Jolie and Brandon. And that was the cover up. You hear me? <laughs> And that's the cover-up. But then, all on Facebook, though, which they run also, guess what is, guess what is shared? No videos. 
But guess what? I realized I've been seeing a lot of people say, what did my other friends think of this? What am I, you know, my, not my, you know, my nailing friends. What do y'all think of this? They don't see it on their page because they friends, they sharing it because, listen, it ain't even news to them. It's only news to us, but they're trying to put the fear inside of us. And they want to get a reaction out of us because they know right now, if I show this man getting killed by a police officer and I've released the helicopter video and the, the helicopter man said, he looks dangerous. That's going to spark up something. And guess what they're going to do? Besides doing what God wants them to do, they're going to replay evil with evil. So now that's another 10 people going out to buy guns. That's another 50 people you throw in jail. That's another money, money, money. And why got everybody else talking about, oh, I got two sons and I'm, and I'm scared for my boys. Now I got y'all fear. I got the power. I'm taking the power back. But it's all about power. Oh, I got the power now. Now we now now it's like this. Now guess what? They want the government to do something. The government got the power back. We depended on the Department of Justice to put that lady in jail. The government got the power back. It's all about power. Jesus said, how do you remove the power that's not doing evil with you? It's not killing cops. That's not going to get the job done. That's not it. He said, but you have to do it in love. Everything Jesus did, Jesus did in love. How do I show you that it's love? Because if you ask me to do this, I'm going to do more than this. I'm going to go above, beyond, than what you expect, what you, what you ever thought I would do. One of the earliest records, example of a non-violent resist, is an exodus account in the Hebrew midwives who refused to obey Pharaoh's command to kill Hebrew infants. That's the first example. Then when we go on to Daniel, we get two more. Got the Hebrew boys in the fire. If you pray to anybody else, you go into the fire. Besides them getting their stuff together and fighting, all they did was stick to what they was doing and pray. And what they tell us is, listen, as long as you do it the God way, God will show up. That's the only point they made there in Hebrews. If you trust in God and don't turn your back on God and don't repay evil with evil, because they knew that the king set them up. Daniel and the lions did. Same way. He knew that the other governors set him up, but he never turned from the way that God allowed him to worship him. Daniel never stopped praying. So how do you uh, take blows without returning them? You cannot lose your Christianity. Don't uh, never let a situation make you lose who you're supposed to be. Don't let nobody take you out of your character. And that's what happens. When somebody take a blow at us, it takes us out of our character. And we're ready, we're ready to return a blow. You cuss me, you gave me permission to cuss you, Christian or not Christian. And that's our excuse. Well, you shouldn't have came here cussing me. You shouldn't have came here and hit me. But we're supposed to be the child of God, children of God. And so we cannot take a blow without a blow. Okay. I'm listening. Jesus was not opposed. No. <laughs> so, and that's what I tell people. Jesus was not opposed because he was in that temple. And he was, you know, um, knocking Anger. down the table. Exactly. Jesus was not opposed. And so, and I don't understand because some people would take that as weakness. Yeah. Take as weakness, but what Jesus relied on is what he's trying to tell us to rely on. He said, I'm not telling you to just get beat up, I'm not telling you, you know, just to get mistreated. He said, But if you trusted me, I'm not going to allow them to mistreat you. That's why I use the Hebrew boys in Daniel because both of them were put in uh, situations that could have cost them their lives. But Jesus said, If you're willing to risk it all for me, I'm willing to save you. And each and every time, Go through your Bible. Whoever was willing to risk it all, Jesus showed up. Now, that's a story. Now, that's a story. Now, we know uh, uh, when Abraham took his kid up, Isaac, to surrender to Jesus, Jesus put a ram in the bush. Now, it's another story where another man made a promise to God in 2 Kings, and he told God, God, if you win this battle, the first kid out of my house, I will sacrifice. It was his daughter. He took his daughter up just like Abraham did, but guess what? Jesus did not send a ram in the bush. But if you turn to Hebrews chapter 11 and you read the Faith Hall of Faith, both of their names are mentioned. Abraham was for going to offer his son Isaac for a sacrifice, and this man, 
Abram, I think his name is, or something like that, who was going to offer his daughter and did offer his daughter. David's son. David's son. It's the long name. Yeah, it's the long name. Absalom. Yeah. Like that. Like, yeah, it's already A. But with the point I'm making is this. What Jesus is saying to us now, then, and what God was saying then, he says, even if you, even if I show up or even if I don't sit around in the bush, you're still showing your faith. And I'm going to reward you at the end of the day. At the end of the day. He says, so some of us, Jesus is 